किसी व्यक्ति के निर्माण का स्वर्णिम समय यौवन काल होता है जिसमें वह आने वाले लंबे जीवन के लिए शरीर मन और आत्मा का निर्माण और विकास करता है इसी नींव पर अपने जीवन का मजबूत भवन खड़ा करता है और उसका भोग करता है किसी भी राष्ट्र के विकास की आधारशिला और ऊर्जा उसकी युवा शक्ति ही होती है यही उसका आत्मबल और इच्छा शक्ति भी होती है इसीलिए कहा गया है वीर भोग्य वसुंधरा राष्ट्र निर्माण के ताने बाने में यौवन के ही धागे होते हैं अतः जो राष्ट्र अपनी इस ऊर्जा का संरक्षण और संवर्धन करता है वह विकास के उच्च शिखर पर पहुंचता है राष्ट्र के कृषि उद्योग शिक्षा चिकित्सा तकनीक राजनीति रूपी चक्के को यही युवा शक्ति ऊर्जा व गति प्रदान करती है यह राष्ट्र की रगों में बहने वाला गर्म खून है जो उसे चैतन्य और प्रगतिशील बनाता है भौतिक वह आध्यात्मिक दोनों के विकास में इसी ऊष्मा का तप सक्रिय रहता है इतिहास साक्षी रहा है कि जब जब किसी राष्ट्र की धुरी रड़खड़ाई है युवा शक्ति ने आगे आकर अपने पुरुषार्थ से उसे सुदृढ़ बनाया है आज अनेक प्रकार की समस्याएं जैसे नशा फैशन प्रस्ती पाश्चात्य जीवन शैली आस्था संकट भ्रष्टाचार बेरोजगारी देश की युवा शक्ति पर आरूढ़ है आज युवा शक्ति को आत्मबोध एवं अपने सांस्कृतिक गौरव से परिचित कराना समय की मांग है वर्ष 2011 की जनगणना के अनुसार हमारे देश में 35 वर्ष तक की उम्र की पैंसठ प्रतिशत आबादी है यह युवा शक्ति जिधर चल पड़ेगी देश भी उधर ही चल पड़ेगा अतः देश का भविष्य अब युवाओं के हाथ में है यह युवा शक्ति ही राष्ट्र शक्ति बनकर राष्ट्र को समृद्धि उन्नति एवं प्रगति के मार्ग पर ले जाएगी कृषि पंडित श्री राम शर्मा आचार्य जी ने युवा की अद्भुत परिभाषा दी है युवा वो है असंभव जिसके शब्द कोश में नहीं जो बाधाओं को चीर कर अपना मार्ग बनाता है जो परिस्थितियों का दास नहीं उनका निर्माता नियंत्रण करता एवं स्वामी है जो भाग्य नहीं 
अपने कर्म पर विश्वास रखता है जो उमंग उत्साह जोश से जीता वो सुनहरे भविष्य के सपने देखता है जो स्वयं सब कुछ करके गौरव अनुभव करता है और विश्व में कुछ अनूठा करना चाहता है असमंजस और अवसाद की स्थिति से गुजर रही युवा पीढ़ी को दिशा देने का काम एक चिंता की कर सकता है वर्ष 2006 में देव संस्कृति विश्वविद्यालय के दीक्षांत समारोह में पूर्व राष्ट्रपति डॉक्टर ए पी जे अब्दुल कलाम व श्रद्धेय डॉक्टर प्रणव पंड्या जी जो विश्वविद्यालय के कुलपति भी हैं मिले और इन दोनों चिंतकों ने मंथन किया कि युवा पीढ़ी को एक सृजनात्मक मंच देने की आवश्यकता है जो राष्ट्र निर्माण में सहायक हो यही से दिया की नींव रखी गई आई एम इंडी डिलाइटेड टू पार्टिसिपेट इन द सेकेंड कॉन्वेकेशन ऑफ देव Sanskriti Vishwa Vidyalaya I am very happy that this institution has been created with a motto of developing the divine culture which is of utmost importance to us while we are on the path of transforming India into a prosperous happy and peaceful society we have the responsibility of transforming India into a developed nation before the year 2020 it is an endless journey through knowledge and enlightenment such a journey opens up new vistas of development or humanism where there is no scope nor room for pettiness disharmony jealousy and hatred or enmity it transforms a human being into a wholesome whole a noble soul and an asset to the universe god bless you जिस तरह एक दिया अंधकार को दूर करने की क्षमता रखता है दिया भी इस देश के युवा मन से अंधेरे को दूर करने का स्वप्न लेकर चला है कि प्रशिक्षण और कार्यशालाओं के माध्यम से शिक्षित स्वस्थ आत्मनिर्भर विनम्र संवेदनशील दिव्य युवाओं को तैयार करने के लिए प्रयासरत है जिससे राष्ट्र निर्माण की रचनात्मक गतिविधियां चलाई जा सके दिव्य भारत का पुनर्निर्माण इसका लक्ष्य युवाओं की क्षमताओं का विकास कर दिव्य भारत का निर्माण करना है जिसमें व्यक्ति परिवार व समाज का उत्थान दिया युवाओं के सपनों में आदर्शवाद लाकर उनकी वैचारिक प्रक्रिया में सकारात्मक बदलाव लाने के लिए प्रयासरत है वैज्ञानिक अध्यात्म के माध्यम से युवाओं में देवत्व की अभिव्यक्ति दुनिया में सद्भाव के साथ सत्युग की वापसी इसका परम उद्देश्य है इस तथ्य की महत्वता समझते हुए वो डॉक्टर कलाम के भारत को वर्ष 2020 तक एक समृद्ध राष्ट्र बनाने के स्वप्न की ओर युवा शक्ति को अग्रसर करने के लिए दिया इस महान राष्ट्र के युवाओं के लिए एक आंदोलन है जो मजबूत सिद्धांतों और यथार्थवादी लक्ष्यों पर आधारित है जो लोग दिल और दिमाग से युवा हैं एवं जो एक नए भारत की परिकल्पना के हमारे स्वप्न से सहमत है उम्र जाति या धर्म की परवाह किए बगैर हमसे जुड़े मुझे विश्वास है गायत्री परिवार के दिया आंदोलन के माध्यम से देश के युवाओं में वो संवेदनाएं प्रकट होगी सामाजिक जिम्मेवारियां प्रकट होगी एक साहस की वृत्ति पैदा होगी कुछ करने के लिए कुछ कर करके दिखाने के लिए जीवन को लगाने की इच्छा होगी देश के लिए जीना सीखो इस मंत्र के साथ इस आंदोलन से जुड़कर आपके जीवन में खुशी एवं एक नए उत्साह का संचार होगा साथ ही अपने राष्ट्र को नई ऊंचाइयों तक ले जाने में आप गौरवान्वित महसूस करेंगे we extend a very warm welcome to everyone uh, we welcome you dr natarajan on this platform today we thank you so much for uh, taking out time from your busy schedule and uh, coming on our platform so this documentary was a brief about what dia is and what are the activities that dia is doing dia is is a prominent youth movement of uh, 21st century uh, which is youth wing of all world gayatri parivar and through various activities as as were shown in the video we are trying to connect to the youth of this country who are like minded and who who have a vision for the country to do something for the country to come together with with us on this platform so in light of the ongoing pandemic when physical activities uh, have almost become impossible we thought of taking this platform the gyan sabha platform which was initiated in 2006 on this virtual platform 
and in last three months we have seen people from the fields of science and technology from the judiciary from art and culture and the idea behind this jan sabha is to invite people from different walks of life who can come on this platform share their wisdom share their experiences which are ultimately a value addition to all of us in becoming better human beings and in contributing something to the nation so the founder of all world gayatri parivar uh, pandit shriram sharma acharya ji his vision was yug nirman he he saw a dream of changing the epoch yug nirman means changing the entire humanity and by change it means a positive change so all those who are like minded anywhere in the world and who share this vision of transforming the world of making this world a better place are like a family to us are i like a family to everyone so we all of us share a common goal and that is betterment of the society and these sessions of gyan sabha add a value to our lives whether it's uh, it's just a shri krishna who came and shared his vision on uh, on what a democracy should be or what should be the rights and duties of citizens or whether we have uh, dr natarajan today who will share his vision on on digital i care and and i care in the times of this digi digital tsunami where all of us are forced to work from home we are forced to resort to gadgets for uh, doing our day to day lives so it becomes very crucial to take care of our eye while yukrishi pandit shriram sharma acharya ji was was a visionary in terms of spiritual outlook at a physical level also it's very important to take care of our body parts and eyes are an extremely important part of our body so it's with great honor that i welcome you uh, i can hear you now there will be a red icon sir there will be a red icon if you click on that it it will become yeah, now now can you hear me good, good evening all can you hear me yes i can hear you yes, yes we, we can hear you sir thank you very much for uh, and my uh, namaskar to everybody in the the i do jot also is the camp like removing light uh, giving light to the patients so i'll share my screen Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Are you able to see? Can you see the screen? Are you able to see my screen? No, sir. Not able to see, sir. One second. Now, now you can see the screen. Now, now you are able to see. It's getting projected, sir. Yes, sir. We can see it now. Okay. So I have chose the topic as uh, pearls for eye care from teens to centenarians, and you are, you are actually asked me to speak on the the digital eye strain. So I just want to say how the eye works. Eye looks like a camera, as you see here. the i has a front with the cornea and everything has to be transparent and this is what i uh, uh, i want to teach everybody that uh, either the teachers or the politicians we have to be transparent like the eye then only the light rays can enter and fall on the screen which is uh, how you see in the camera and here you see the this is an anatomical picture how the eye looks from outside and how the eye looks from cross section and how the eye looks from the side and you have the muscles which move the eye Uh, right left and up down and here uh, 
you, 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 you see the video how the eye was. The inner workings of the human eye are complex, but at the same time, fascinating. The eye is easy to understand if you think of it as a camera. When you take a picture, the lens in the front of the Uh, can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see. Okay. So you can see the video. The inner workings of the human eye are complex, yes, yes. but at the same time, fascinating. The eye is easy to understand if you think of it as a camera. When you take a picture, the lens in the front of the camera allows light through and focuses that light on the film. When the light hits the film, a picture is taken. The eye works in much the same way. In a healthy eye, the lens is clear and allows light to pass through. Light is focused by the cornea and lens onto a thin layer of tissue called the retina. The retina works like the film in a camera. When light hits the retina, tiny cells collect the light signals and convert them into electrical signals, which are then sent through the optic nerve and to the brain. The retina works like where they are processed into the images we see. So the, uh, you just saw how the eye works. So the main thing I made a new syndrome based on during the COVID time called the WhatsApp vision syndrome and also how to overcome it. And what is WhatsApp vision syndrome? Actually, all of us are using a uh, the smartphones, mobile phones, and various apps, which has been uh, increased in the recent years. And smart smartphones may have adverse health effects, particularly on the eyes, because users stare at the screen for a much longer time than they do with ordinary mobile phones. And this was there even before the corona. And now with the corona outbreak, people around the nation or world are fully engulfed with their smartphones tapping through WhatsApp. On uh, 10th April 2020, I introduced this. WhatsApp vision syndrome, which is now the present eye condition for all, and uh, which actually includes uh, computer vision syndrome and dry eye syndrome, and also the physical strain which uh, uh, happens. The computer vision syndrome is also referred as a digital eye strain, describes a group of eye and vision related problems that result from prolonged computer, tablet, e reader, and uh, cell phone use. Prevention is control lighting and glare on the device screen establishing proper working distances and posture for screen viewing and assuring that even minor vision problems are properly corrected. So I have come, I have uh, defined the what's sufficient syndrome as a computer vision syndrome or the digital eye syndrome, dry eye syndrome and psychological impact, uh, anxiety, mental and emotional health. It doesn't matter what you read or many times negative when it impacts the uh, mental status of the person. So the eye, eye health, it actually because of the computer blurring of vision, redness of the eyes, vision disturbance, secretion in the eyes, inflammation in the eyes and lacrimation of the eyes, and contact lenses users are more likely to develop early dry eye syndrome, which is in the publication as given below. And there are also electromagnetic uh, field generated are reported to cause apoptosis, cataract formation, edema, endothelial cell loss, inflammatory response, and neurological effect, but this is provided you are there continuously and uh, which you uh, interact with the tissue, not otherwise. And there are also the effects of uh, blue light, cause deterioration of the tear film, increased level of inflammatory markers, blue light causes excessive reactive oxygen species production and damage photoreceptor and retinal pigment and leads to 
acute acquired uh, cometin isotropia and that means the squint in the adolescence. So the consequences of using uh, the mobile phone or the smartphone, there is a, there is a report uh, which has been published in the American Academy of Ophthalmology and which is there in the journal, the New England Journal of Medicine, loss of vision after viewing a smartphone screen in the dark. As you see here, this girl is uh, lined one side and one eye becoming light adapted and the other eye blocked by a pillow becomes dark adapted. And uh, there's also publication prevalence of smartphone users at risk for developing cell phone vision syndrome among college students. And the, the high exposure to college students in developing the cell phone syndrome, the study was conducted on impact of self-esteem, personality and behavior among WhatsApp user and non-user to learn what percentage of all smartphone usage is specific to WhatsApp. Find out the high risk to young college students in developing the cell phone vision syndrome and correlate perceived stress pattern and quality of sleep with cell phone vision syndrome. The prevalence of cell phone vision syndrome was found to be 83% and it was found, uh, found similar between the male and female students. And there's a, uh, also called a nomophobia, an abbreviation of no mobile phone phobia, which is also called cell phone addiction symptoms include experiencing anxiety or panic over losing your phone, obsessively checking for missed calls, emails and texts, using your phone in appropriate places like the bathroom or a char, uh, church or temple, missing out on opportunities for face-to-face -face interactions. And uh, uh, maladaptive behavioral difficulties seen in impulse control disorder in general or pathological gambling, interference with school or work, and decreased real life social interaction, decreased academic ability, cause relationship problems, cause physical health related problems, including blurred vision and pain in the wrist or the back of or the pain uh, of the neck. And there was a PAL uh, post uh, put in the, the Tamil Nadu High Court, in the Madras High Court, saying that the eight hours the school children are tortured with the uh, online classes. So they asked for a recommendation and we, we from the Ophthalmic Society have recommended that they can have three hour class, which will just be uh, shocking. And also this light emanated from the mobile phone can uh, affect your sleep. The light emission from the screen of the mentioned devices may affect their sleep quality. Receiving messages may awake users at night. Shorter sleep hours produced by delayed bedtime may cause increased frequency of dose during daytime. That means your productivity will be affected. And uh, the sleep deprivation links obesity, added time awake and the opportunity to eat, increased hunger, increased fatigue, implying lower physical activity level, sleep loss and fatigue increased sedentary life and therefore decrease both exercise and non-exercise energy expenditure under real life condition. And this is happening even without the COVID condition if you're addicted to the mobile or the, and also increase the risk of depression and uh, the psychological related behaviors in teenagers and uh, there are neck problems uh, where, where the text neck is continuously looking at the mobile increased illness due to germs one in six cell phone has a fecal matter on it e coli bacteria which can cause fever vomiting and diarrhea is found on many phones and that's why i think if you have the personal hygiene which is particularly during this covid we we practice something as a doctor called sms s stands for social distancing m for wearing masks and yes, for using the sanitizer, that means personal hygiene, keeping the hand clean. And phones have been to be contaminated with the, the MRSA, the causes painful abscesses, life threatening infections in bone, joints, surgical wounds, bloodstream, heart valves, and lungs, and male infertility because preliminary studies have revealed that radiation may decrease sperm count, sperm motility, and viability because you are keeping the laptop on the, uh, uh, on the lap. And uh, prevention is a, it is necessary to screen early for eye examination to keep the eyes healthy, routine eye examination and appropriate vision habits, prevent or decrease the progress of symptoms associated with the uh, using the, all these computers and adolescents should limit the use of less than two hours a day. But in the, during this, uh, it's a big problem during the COVID because everybody used to it. So we suggest this 2023. What is that? Every 20 minutes, look at a, you, uh, when you're looking at the screen, you look at a distance at 20 feet, 20 feet distance, uh, look 20 seconds uh, a distance. If you have a window, 
just walk out, have a look for 20 seconds outside a distance. That means that I will be relaxed. And this is what we call it as 20 20, uh, 20 rule. That means uh, even the three hour class we suggested a period can have 40 minutes. That means 20 minutes of class with a 20 second interval for the, the child or the student to look at distance and again concentrate for 20 minutes and have a 10 minute break between two periods. That means we have 40 minutes class with a 2022 rule and then we have a 10 minute break and again have a 40 minute class. The idea is you should not be stuck to the chair all the time because one ergonomically it will produce neck pain, sitting back pain, all that will happen. So this is a visual fatigue syndrome and that's why, so do you find yourself spending more time texting, tweeting or emailing or a, and it, uh, less talking to real time people? Do you sleep with your smartphone on or under your pillow or next to you? Do you find yourself giving and answering texts, tweets, and emails at all hours, even when it means interrupting other things you are doing? Do you feel reluctant to be without your smartphone, even for a short time? And when you eat meals, is your cell phone always part of the dining table? When your phone rings, beeps, buzzes, do you feel an increased urge to check for texts, tweets, or emails, updates, etc.? Do you find yourself mindlessly checking your phone uh, many times a day, even? Uh, when you are you know there is a likely uh, nothing new or important to see if you or a loved one is concerned about maladaptive behaviors and feelings associated with cell phone addiction don't hesitate to call to learn more about the treatment available to you so i have a youtube video which shows about the digital vision syndrome and um, Uh, are you seeing the video? Uh, are you seeing the video? Yes. Our eyes are constantly working to combine both sides of our vision to create a clear image. The nearer an object is, the harder our eyes have to work to fuse that image from both of our eyes. In this day and age, most of our work is done at near, be it on a computer, tablet, smartphone, or other such device. As a result, the demand on our eyes is greater than ever, resulting in symptoms like neck tension, eye fatigue, headaches, and dry eyes. This is considered digital vision syndrome. Digital vision syndrome is the physical eye discomfort felt by many individuals after two or more hours in front of a digital screen. Nearly 65% of Americans experience symptoms of digital vision syndrome on a daily basis. More than nine out of 10 people with digital vision syndrome use digital devices for two or more hours each day. At iBrain Medical, we have developed a technology to detect and treat symptoms of digital vision syndrome. You are probably wondering why you are experiencing these symptoms. Because we have two eyes, everything we see is a combination of two images fused together by your brain. Each eye captures a clear photo, like a camera, and your brain combines the photos, making one single image. This line of communication takes place constantly when both of your eyes are open. When your eyes and brain are aligned, this process happens seamlessly. But what if this communication doesn't happen perfectly? While each eye may capture a clear photo individually, if there is a misalignment between your eyes, the brain is forced to manually combine every pair of photos. This constant adjustment continuously stimulates your trigeminal nerve, often causing the symptoms of digital vision syndrome. So how do we relieve these symptoms? Your eye care provider can identify if you are experiencing a misalignment with a simple sight sync test. The sight sync is the only objective visual testing system designed to accurately measure and prescribe for eye misalignment because SightSync detects an imbalance in your vision at all distances. If you are experiencing a misalignment in your vision, your eye care professional can prescribe custom neuro lenses, a new lens designed for eyeglasses that provides relief for the symptoms associated with the overuse of digital devices. Talk to your doctor today about NeuroLenses. Relief is in sight. So, 
So digital technology will evolve in coming years. It will have more apps and our eyes will spend more st staring at screens for work. We need to learn how to interact safely with this technology to learn, develop healthy eye habits. And that's called the visual hygiene, which is there for years. But unfortunately, nobody is concentrating, neither the doctors nor the people or the students. So and during this COVID, I think the last four months, everybody's onto the computer because it's work from home. That means work from the computer and that's the problem. So I just want to say that apart from the normal uh, they work from home and digitalized and we also have common eye conditions which are being neglected during this COVID. So the refractive error, the result of a mismatch between optics and the growth of the eye and it's not a disease and the treatment is just wearing glasses or contact lens or refractive surgery, which we can do. Emetropia means you're normal, where you're having no, no need for glasses. You can see everything. Emetropia means that you have a refractive error. And then you have a condition called myopia. And most of the students are having this myopia. That means they have glasses, which is made of concave. Uh, and, uh, they are also known as the short sightedness and corrected with concave glasses. That means the minus number glass, depending on the each individual, somebody will have minus one, some minus two, depending on the uh, axial length of the eyeball. If it is more than one millimeter, then the normal eye, you'll have minus three. If it is more than two millimeter, it will be minus six. And then the other thing, but when you have a, when the eyeball is uh, smaller and it, is, it produces a thing called hyperopia and that is called the, which is corrected by the plus lens. And then uh, if the parallel rays come to focus and to focus and that's called astigmatism and then you, you have symptoms like headache, eye strain, blurred vision, head tilting, etc. So you just have a simple cylindrical glass which correct the uh, correction. That means you have a distorted image or a, you can't read the computer properly or the board. If you go to an eye doctor or even an optometrist, they can check whether you have astigmatism or not. It, as I said, you can use it as normal glasses or a contact lens or you can use plastic to correct it. If a person has a refractive error, then light is not properly focusing on the retina in the back of the eye. People who have refractive errors may wish to consider LASIK as an alternative to wearing corrective lenses. LASIK is a surgical procedure that corrects refractive errors by changing the shape of the cornea and thus the way the eye focuses light internally. This procedure delivers excellent results with shorter recovery times compared to other procedures. The goal of LASIK is to reduce or eliminate a person's dependence on eyeglasses or contact lenses. Although LASIK cannot guarantee 2020 vision for every patient, it can significantly improve eyesight and generally reduce and in some cases eliminate the need for corrective lenses. Commonly known as a near vision problem and uh, which uh, happens at the age of 40 where you need a plus one at the age of 40 for reading that means a newspaper you can't read or you can't read the whatsapp at, at the age of 40 and then at the age of 50 you may need plus two and uh, or at the age of 60 onwards you need plus three there are uh, refractive surgery available and again you have to go to an eye doctor check your eye whether you have no other eye disease and whether you are eligible because every procedure is not eligible for every individual it has to be customized to each individual. And there's a condition called amblyopia. People who are uh, having children, they should know this. That means they children are age of four or five, they should know this condition because before they go to school, we should make sure that uh, every child has right eye normal vision and left eye normal vision individually. How do you check that? You have to take a eye doctor or optometrist where, where you cover one eye with one hand and check whether both eye individually or having you know, 6 6 or, or what do we call as 20 by 20 vision. If one eye is less or one eye has number, and if you don't give, they develop a lazy eye, and that's called amblyopia in our uh, uh, line. In order for a child to develop normal, healthy vision, the brain must receive clear and aligned images from both eyes. 
There are several conditions that can interfere with this process. And over a sufficient length of time, a child's developing brain can learn to permanently ignore the weaker eye and favor the stronger or dominant eye. This condition is called amblyopia, commonly referred to as lazy eye. Amblyopia is most commonly associated with misalignment of the eyes. It may also be caused by a large or unequal refractive error between the eyes. In rare cases, amblyopia may result if vision is blocked by a cataract, corneal scar, droopy eyelid, or excessive patching therapy. So the red eyes, the other condition which people should know, and particularly conjunctivitis, and there is a report from world over that in coronavirus fever, some of them have developed conjunctivitis. So that is why they suggest a face shield, one, because the coronavirus can enter the human through the eye, or the nose or the mouth and that's why one is we keep uh, sanitizing the hand and uh, if you go to an eye doctor uh, any dental or ENT where they have a, a face shield the idea is no air and uh, should uh, directly go to the person so that's why the uh, coronavirus can go through the eye and then some coronavirus patients can have conjunctivitis the other redness can be due to a condition called glaucoma or an inflammation called uveitis and if you have any of them you have to go to a eye doctor. This is like a cataract. What is cataract? Cataract is a cloudy lens. And as you see here, this uh, the white part is the lens which has become opaque. This is a total cataract. But the same thing you can imagine when the transparent lens becomes translucent, that also is cataract. And that, those are the patients where the patient gets less can undergo surgery to uh, correct their uh, vision. And uh, when the cataract uh, actually produces the day-to-day -day vision problem, or any difficulty in uh, uh, vision uh, when uh, it's needed, when uh, it produces, uh, uh, when you have a day to day life affected, and you can do a cataract surgery, and there is a laser also possible, cool, and you have a portable as an article. See a video on cataract surgery. Cataract surgery is one of the safest and most commonly performed operations around the world. As surgical tools and techniques continue to advance, cataract surgery has become safer, more effective, and more predictable. One such advancement in cataract surgery now allows computer-controlled laser technology to replace the use of handheld instruments during key steps of the procedure. First, instead of using a surgical blade, the surgeon uses the laser to create small incisions in the cornea, which allows access to the cloudy lens inside the eye. Following the incision, the surgeon will use the laser to create an opening in the front layer of the lens. The surgeon then uses the laser to break the cloudy lens into smaller pieces instead of using manual instruments. The pieces of lens are then removed using a tiny ultrasound suction device that is inserted through the corneal incision. Once the cataract has been completely removed, an artificial replacement lens is then implanted through the tiny incision into the capsular bag where the natural lens used to be. Because the incision is so small, it is often watertight and does not require sutures. If you have astigmatism, your doctor may also recommend using the computer-controlled laser to create special astigmatism-correcting incisions. These incisions are called corneal relaxing incisions and are often performed during the cataract procedure. Corneal relaxing incisions correct the uneven shape of the cornea by flattening its steeper axis. When the incisions are made, areas of the corneal structure are relaxed, reforming it into a more rounded shape. The goal of corneal relaxing incisions is to improve vision and reduce the need for eyeglasses after surgery. In summary, using a laser for certain steps of the cataract procedure reduces the number of instruments needed for surgery, increases the precision, and may improve accuracy of the procedure.
Other benefits include quicker recovery time and reduced chances of complications after surgery. Refractive and visual outcomes also may be improved, resulting in true refractive cataract surgery that greatly reduces or eliminates the need for eyeglasses after surgery. It affects the eye. It is being neglected during the corona time. Patients with diabetes, and they always feel that we can go later. And we are seeing, which is happening world over, not only in Mumbai or India, world over it's happening that they are missing their checkups or appointments and they are becoming temporarily blind. So here you see a picture with the normal retina and where you see the diabetes affects the small bladders of the eye and produces diabetic retinopathy. We have about 71 or 70 million having diabetes in uh, India and the risk factors are uh, uh, duration of the diabetes, poor control, pregnant having diabetes, blood pressure combination, hypertension, kidney problems, hyperlipidemia, smoking can aggravate diabetes and uh, retina problem, anemia, obesity. So this is how you see a diagrammatic where you see blood clots and uh, heart accidents which uh, produces micro changes. The center of the retina is all right, the vision may be normal. And uh, and then you can see the various stages. You see the front, the front, this one is the normal retina, and you have early stage, mild stage, late stage. And till this time, many times the vision can be normal, but they can have a sudden overnight loss of vision when they develop a hemorrhage or they have a develop a detachment. And these need surgery. And in this earlier stage with blood clot, they can do a laser photocoagulation and then uh, uh, it can, uh, you can see this is how the laser is done to uh, destroy the peripheral retina and maintain the center of the retina so that the vision can be maintained. And some eyes who has a hemorrhage will need an injection so that the eye doctor will decide. And then who has a hemorrhage or retinal detachment, that's what I have specialized. We do a surgery called the pars plana vitrectomy. We go behind the eye and then remove the vitreous gel and pull the, uh, all the pull what is happening. And we, that's why any diabetic, we we say that uh, uh, we have to uh, have a, a recommend, we recommend a primary check at the time of diagnosis in every person. So prevention is better than cure, whether it's a digital vision syndrome or a diabetic or a cataract, there's no way to prevent because it's a, most of the time it's an aging chain. And every Indian deserves an eye checkup, and that's what I recommend. And all the time, so I have made a, a acronym along with our CEO of the foundation called Screening Through Teleophthalmology to Prevent Diabetic Blindness Called Stop Blindness, where we are actually using non-medical uh, people to screen diabetic retinopathy. What do they mean? We actually uh, help them by using a mobile phone. We can have an app uh, developed by this company in Bangalore called Remedio. And a, and, and a software developed by a company called uh, Medios in uh, Singapore, where they incorporated the AI, which can be used, and where uh, the anybody can be trained. That's why it's called ABCD. Anybody can screen for diabetic retinopathy, and, and then uh, they can be referred to the eye doctors. So this can be used in uh, uh, by the uh, people all over the uh, country, particularly all villages. The other condition uh, which is uh, needs uh, checkup and that too during COVID should not be missed is the glaucoma. What is glaucoma? Glaucoma is a uh, condition where the high pressure goes up. And many times you don't have any symptom pain. Slowly the vision can. Uh, Nothing is more precious than your eyesight. As you look at the world around you, think of how valuable your vision is. Now think how your world would be if you were losing your eyesight to a silent disease called glaucoma. Glaucoma is a group of eye diseases that gradually steals your sight without warning and often without symptoms. Every year, millions of people around the world develop glaucoma and each day without treatment can bring them one step closer to blindness. So the other condition which happens around the age, above the age of 50 is age-related macular degeneration. And 50 is not a old age, but at the age of 50, you can have changes in the skin, you can have changes in the hair, similar thing like white hair, similar thing happens in the retina. It can 
causes damage to the center of the eye, retina, called the macula, a small spot near the center of the retina. The part of the eye need, needed for sharp and central vision and color vision. You see here in the center, you see yellow spots, that's called the dry macular degeneration. On the other side, you have wet ARMD, where you see blood clots, which is, that means a small, fine blood, new blood vessel has formed and produced a mild blood clot, but that can destroy the central vision, and that's the reason we have to take care. The most significant symptom of macular degeneration is blurred or distorted central vision. Over time, macular degeneration can affect vision by forming a blurred, darkened, or empty area in the center of vision, or distorting one's surroundings, most noticeably in the appearance of straight lines. Macular degeneration may also cause colors to become less vivid. Blurred or distorted central vision can cause an inability to perform tasks that require precision, like driving a car. Fortunately, this disease does not cause total blindness because side vision is not affected. If macular degeneration occurs in only one eye, the symptoms of the disease may not be noticed right away as the good eye compensates for the bad eye. It is essential to take these symptoms seriously and to speak with an eye care professional immediately if they are developed. So other condition is uh, trauma and this is where our hospital and many eye hospitals were never closed. We always attended to the eye injury and it recommended to see the eye doctor immediately and take the primary eye care. In case a specialist is not available in the locality, a specialist can be seen once primary care is done by the nearest eye doctor. And you can see injury like a simple hemorrhage, uh, hemorrhage on the surface of the eye or it induces the cornea or it can make a tear in the eye and you can see the in contents of the eye coming out or the whole eye is collapsed like a tomato, all that can happen. So there are emergencies in the eye and there's a sudden loss of vision, which can happen when, a, when the retina falls down, or we call it retinal detachment. When there's eye injury, when there's an acute red eye, you don't know what it is, you should see eye doctor. And then infection, either falling injury or surgery, severe pain and sudden loss of vision. That means you should go to an eye doctor even taking all precautions and even during the COVID. So tips for uh, optimum eye health, they uh, routinely to avoid uh, the sun's harmful rays, the UV rays, you should use a 99.99% uh, or 100% UV filter glasses when you go out on the sun. And uh, protective glasses are a must for occupations like welding, carpentry, industries, and definitely sport, contact sports or uh, sports like squash, tennis, badminton wear, the ball or the shuttle is small, which can injure the eye. So you have to have a particular glass goggles, which has to be made of PMMA, 2 mm thick PMMA glasses. And uh, if you are if you're a contact lens user, you have to avoid the risk of infection. Always wash your hands, and which is there before COVID also and during COVID also. Not only before putting in or taking out your contact lenses, make sure to disinfect contact lenses as instructed and, and replace them as appropriately given by the contact lens practitioner, optometrist, or eye, doc eye doctor. Avoid uh, excessive screen exposure. And that's what uh, in the beginning of the talk I mentioned. Follow the 20-20-20 rule. After 20 minutes of screen exposure, take a 20 minute second break and look at the 20 feet uh, distance and then so that you can blink the eye. Definitely, a routine eye checkup is important so that uh, you make sure your right eye and left eye are individually uh, having normal vision and that's why the year 2020 based on that they made a program over 30 or 40 years back called vision 2020 that means each eye should have the vision 2020 so be vigilant about any changes in your eye like a hazy vision double vision red eye constant eye pain and swelling flashes or any floaters in the front of the eye when you have a doubt get a better contact an eye doctor avoid rubbing your eyes which is a very bad habit and most of the time, it's a bad habit we rub the eye for no reason. And then some diseases cluster in family, whether particularly hypertension, diabetes, glaucoma, and the night blindness called uh, retinitis pigmentosa. And if it is there, right from the, instead of getting worried and making a, a, a tension, get a checkup done, 
certain things like if it is there, you have to face it rather than worrying about it. So that they generally a healthy diet and healthy lifestyle will help. And that's why I call it a happy, holistic, and a, 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 a life you should lead. So for that, this healthy diet will help to keep the eye healthy, but not to remove the glasses or uh, everything. But at least you can uh, uh, slow down the aging process. So you can use, uh, have green leafy vegetables. If you're a fish eater, you can eat fish, eggs, nuts, uh, fruits like orange, lemon, grape, or any colorful vegetable as you see here. And if you're a smoker, definitely smoking is bad for the eye. It, pro it produces macular degeneration, cataract, optic nerve damage. And if you're a, not a smoker and if somebody smokes, we encourage them not to smoke and make sure you're not nearby and be a passive smoker. So I want to thank uh, my, my grandfather, who was also an eye doctor, my father, uh, who's uh, also was an eye doctor. So together, we have uh, three of us, uh, together in three different time zone, time period, we are uh, serving the country. I'm still continuing to serve in the, uh, for I, uh, 150 years of service to the nation and continue more. So this is a hospital where all the three uh, generations we train. This is the first eye hospital in Asia and the second in the world, which is in uh, Madras, and the first museum of ophthalmology uh, in in India, and we also had the one of the earliest cataract surgeon was a, a part of the Maratha king in Tanjur, who in 17th century was doing eye surgery in Tanjur, which is a part of Tamil Nadu. And uh, we are in the uh, 2020, the 200 glorious years of modern Indian ophthalmology. And the first eye surgery, that is the cataract surgery, was done by Shushruta 600 BC. So uh, thank you very much for a patient listening and. Uh, and I'm uh, ready for a uh, discussion. Thank you so much, sir, for that that uh, meeting session, which dealt so much into the depth of how the eye functions. And I mean, and uh, as you rightly said at the end, that uh, it's 150, 200 years of service, which is the reason why the government of India has awarded Dr. Natarajan with, with the Padma Shri. And in, in all your experiences, whether as the CMD of the Aditya Jyoti Hospital, whether as the president of the Organized Medicine Academic Guild, OMAG, immediate past president of AIOS, OTSI, secretary general of the Global Eye Genetics Consortium, board of trustee of the International Council of Ophthalmology, president of APOTS, SN alumni, board member of RWC, ICOT, chief advisor of Ophthalmic Trauma Society of Africa. Your contribution has been immense in the domain of ophthalmology and uh, what we have learned today is something uh, which is new for us and we, we have got an insight of how the eye functions and how should we take care of the eye. So thank you so much, doctor, for that, that absolutely riveting session. Now, we have some questions from the participants who, who have certain questions in respect of the session. We'll, take yeah. them, sir. we'll just take one moment, uh, one minute to to appreciate Ms. Amrita Mohanty, who's a law student from Utkal University, and she attended our last session on, on bamboo nomics, and she wrote a beautiful poem on, um, on bamboos. Bamboo is a nature's gift. So Dia and Maharashtra Bamboo Promotion Foundation thanks Amrita Mohanty, a law student, for appreciating us and, and appreciating the session and writing a beautiful poem. So thank you, Amrita, there. Uh, Dr. Natarajan, so the question, uh, I'll uh, put the questions to you. And uh, uh, the first question is, sir, just, just a second, sir. The first question is, how effective are yoga practices for eyes like Netrasnan? What practice can we do at home to take care of our eyes? Are there any day-to-day -day exercises uh, by which we can take care of the eyes? Uh, sir, so as far as our, our allopathy, we, have, we really don't have anything specific as an eye exercise which will improve because there are a lot of, uh, if you see in the yoga, they are uh, saying that. And even in Surya Namaskar, we recommend not to look at the sun when you're doing the Surya Namaskar. So I think the specifically from our side as an ophthalmology, whatever science we are having in the world, we don't have any specific exercise. But actually I want to say that I'm working with S. Vyasa University, which is the Swami Vivekananda, yoga and uh, natural uh, 
uh, what is the natural uh, 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 this thing in uh, Bangalore, which is actually uh, by, uh, where who actually yoga you know, International Yoga Day of uh, June twenty first, who, who who was uh, promoted. If we are doing a study, where uh, uh, we hope to come out with something, particularly yoga, using to prevent diabetes and thereby diabetic retinopathy. We are also using, uh, uh, along with the SVSI University and the MIT Boston, we are doing a study on a thing called thermal scan using iris scan and a correlation with fundus scan to see whether any effect of yoga will help in preventing diabetes and diabetic related eye problem. But specifically, yogic exercise for the eye, I don't know, I mean, most of the time it helps in uh, uh, breathing and controlling your. Uh, uh, other things, but eye specifically, because uh, fortunately, the muscles of the eye, which moves the eye, is connected to the brain. That means the, there are different muscles working for that. When you look to the, or turn your eye from center to, to one side, to this way, there are one different muscle in the right eye and one different muscle in the left eye. So it's not the same muscle. And it is not the, like the muscle what we have in the uh, biceps or where you, you have to do exercise to develop muscle. There's nothing like that in the eye. And there are a, a thing called uh, uh, we have an iris and pupil, which is also something like muscular structure where when you put light, it constricts, and when you go into the dark, it uh, enlarges. So all this are uh, it is like autonomic uh, nervous system where it is not controlled by you; it is actually controlled by the uh, autonomic nervous system. So we I really don't have any answer for yoga controlling the eye because there there is one group of uh, uh, saying that you do yoga and you can remove glasses, which is again, see, I don't wear glasses. I'm fortunate and I'm able to manage. And uh, because uh, medically, my father also used to question, how can you do that? But I don't know. Positive thinking can have effect. But the question is, normal aging changes can uh, uh, produce the uh, uh, difficulty in reading the near vision. And then even the there is a theory which is proven now, you do more near what? myopia and that is how in 90% uh, of the population in China and in Japan and in Singapore they have uh, glasses that means myopia well the eyeball is longer than normal and even one millimeter as I said will produce minus three diopter uh, glasses so there they are recommending to use uh, eye drop 0.01 percent uh, atropin which again has to be prescribed by a pediatric ophthalmologist that means an uh, eye doctor who has undergone training in uh, uh, checking the children. And uh, so they have to do recommend. And second, they recommend minimum of one hour or uh, playing in the sun. So th that means uh, uh, if you, uh, you have to make sure the eyes look at the distance. So continuously looking at the growth, growing age from uh, one year to uh, 10 years, if you are continuously working only on the computer or on the mobile, definitely you're bound to have glasses. Having glass is not a disease. Fortunately, at one point I forgot to highlight that. Fortunately, when the digital life syndrome or the computer vision syndrome or WhatsApp vision syndrome does not produce uh, a permanent blindness, but it produces a lot of damages which can be prevented. So I think yoga can be done for general health and which will help the eye. Sir. But I don't think uh, yoga prevents any eye problems. Hello. Participants are requested to keep themselves on mute. We'll take questions and put to Dr. Natarajan. So please put yourself on mute. My chat option. Participants are requested Hello. to Hello. keep themselves on mute, please. And write your question in the chat box, please. Uh, Dr. Natarajan, you mentioned... Sir, uh, where is the chat box, sir? There is a number which has been displayed in the chat box. So please put yourself on mute and send the question on the on the chat box or on the mobile number, please. I request the IT team to put mute the participants. Uh, Dr. Natarajan, you mentioned uh, uh, S Vyasa and, and the collaboration that that, uh, that is there with S Vyasa. So the Dev Sanskriti University at Hyderabad uh, at, uh, at Haridwar and uh, the Chancellor Dr. Pano Pandyaji. Um, has had the occasion to give a discourse at S Vyasa, and uh, there's a lot of synergy there as well. So we would like to invite you to Dev Sanskriti University at Haridwar and see if there can be any mutual synergies and and uh, 
because Dev Sanskriti University is doing some great work in the in the domain of alternative education of exploring ancient Indian wisdom such as yoga uh, uh, in, in, in the modern context. So that could pave the way for some research and something of this can, uh, sort can be worked out. So please do uh, sure. visit the university, sir, once this, this pandemic is over, sir. Yes, yes. And to the mail, whatever required, and we can see what we can do, even with the, uh, the, any of the technology, to know what's happening. Absolutely, sir. So, yeah. Coming back to the question, sir. Now, one of the questions is, uh, is it preferable to splash our eyes with water in the early morning? Is, I mean, how preferable is that? So actually, again, the problem is, uh, is the water clean? So there is no need, but when you take a normal bath, many times people ask me, I, at least I can't open my eyes. When I take a bath, so I think uh, whatever normally you are going to clean the air, but they're taking when you are taking a head bath and we're taking a, even a dip in the river, I think automatically the eye is washed and no need to wash inside the eye because God has given a lacrimal gland which produces fluid which actually makes a tear film which gives oxygen to the surface of the eye and also cleanses. So there are some micro uh, biochemical by uh, the things are sent for cleaning the eye. And there is a normal, what you call as conjunctival flora. For example, that's why we brush the teeth. Where there is a normal bacteria, even in the mouth, in the skin, and also in the stomach. And that's why, even for a digestion, that's why they are also ask you to take curd, because you need normal bacteria to also digest food and uh, other things. So I think there is a normal conjunctival flora also is there. So if there is a natural nature given. And there's no need to wash, uh, splash water, but I don't know how. Uh, I think it's like a, there's a thing called if you slap, if you put if somebody faints and you slap yourself on the face, which is actually activates ascending reticular activating system. That is this part of the brain, eye and the brain, uh, sorry, uh, the face is connected to the brain, so you are alerted. So I think that that's the only thing I can see because I close the eyes and wash the face. That means you are alerting your brain when you get up, and I think uh, that is the reason even. Uh, Robin Sharma writes that every day instead of getting up at uh, 7 o'clock, get up at 6 o'clock, or if you're getting up at 6, make it at 5 o'clock so that you have one hour for yourself. And don't, yeah, as soon as you get up, don't use the phone or the, see the computer or whatever. You be yourself, do yoga, do exercise, do walking, running, or whatever, chanting, rather than seeing some instrument. So I think the idea of splashing water on the face is there to stimulate your brain. But uh, splashing the eye is not required, but it has become a practice. Many patients, that's why specifically after an eye surgery, we say no water on the face for one month. Because we are not sure of the uh, uh, the sterility of the eye, water. And 100% is not a portable water in India. And in abroad, uh, in the US at least, they have, you can take a tap water. But in India, you cannot. Right, sir. So one of the common questions uh, that has come question into one and ask sir, that uh, presently and also normally even without the pandemic there is uh, too much of time that is spent as you rightly pointed out on the mobile phone or the computers and there is a lot of uh, strain on the eyes yeah. so uh, i mean what is it that one can do i mean what's the thing about blue light is it good is it bad uh, how does it actually impact our eyes to spend so much time on um, on the computer and uh, mobile and how does one strike a balance how do we avoid straining the eyes beyond a point yeah so i think uh, one good thing is my grandmother is 102 and uh, she's on cataract surgery 25 years back in both eyes but she can read without glasses and uh, her eyes are perfect and the retina looks like a teenager i keep uh, just joking with her I think the one is a balanced diet, as I said, colorful, greeny, green leafy vegetables, but that will not prevent glasses. And the second is, we, even when you go out, you don't look at the sun at all for any reason, and particularly during the eclipses. And uh, the other is, as you rightly asked, during the COVID time, all of us, including me, are into the computer. So what I do is, whenever like this, I give a talk, I'm stuck to the computer for one hour, but the rest of the time, for example, I'm again on a webinar from six to uh, whatever eight o'clock uh, uh, right now and then I'm, I'm what i'll do is whenever my turn is not there and i'm not required to concentrate i put both audio and video in the mute and take a walk 
and sometimes i jump do exercise do sit ups or uh, whatever i do and then uh, the idea is uh, you should not be ideal because it's not good and that is why in the jewish uh, prayer they actually do the prayer like this and then there is a theory also because the idea is they, according to them that they want to tell the god that they are alive and that's why they are saying they are moving so same thing i think and i think that is why even in uh, colleges and school we have a period we have a interval so that the teacher goes uh, all of them turn around make noise whatever so i think even concentration power is a problem so to avoid strain like this now looking at the computer fortunately it is not like a focus like from the computer or the mobile phone unless you take it so close to the eye and then you have put all the lights around your off and then the laser treatment which came to the eye was actually derived from the how you are burning a paper using the uh, condensing lens from the sunlight and that also a six o'clock sunlight uh, sunrise light cannot uh, burn the paper you need almost uh, 12 o'clock uh, mid, uh, noon uh, sun, uh, sun to focus on the paper and then only you can uh, burn the paper same thing you need a focused light, light all the time on the eye and they have done experiments in monkey where they put light constantly on the eye fortunately when you are uh, looking into the computer even i'm talking to you i'm already normal blinking is given the only problem is we as a human being concentrate like this and uh, keep looking so close like that and then we stare and that means we don't blink and if you don't blink there is no tear film form and when there's no tear film form it produces irritation redness then you have the habit of squeezing and that's why you feel like putting water and that's why and, and because of the ac now if you have an ac directly on the eye that also produces dry eye so i think the simplest is 2020 rule and you make sure uh, that whenever you feel strained just relax nothing will happen if you are working on see i feel i'm working 10 hours a day because I, i'm on uh, so many internet meetings and zoom and whatever there's a vaccine and many things and i think i'm working more than normal uh, earlier i was operating on a uh, ma- microscope and now i'm with the computer more but i think i take a break continuously and when you take a break and no light will affect the eye and fortunately no computer light and uh, the mobile light has produced any permanent damage it's all a, a stress to the eye. so i think uh, even though there's a, a view light which is con- constantly exposed they are saying actually it didn't happen which is you have the number of hours constantly you have to be there which i think i uh, very inhuman to really look at it so resting is the key sir resting your eye uh, at, at regular intervals is the key Right. Uh, one question is, uh, uh, and a lot of people have asked this: How how safe is the LASIK surgery? And I mean, does it ensure that glasses are taken off, or how how safe is a, is a LASIK surgery, sir? And does yeah. it depend yeah. on the age, or what are the factors? Right. So the factor you have to check the eye as a total. So is a LASIK surgery, sir? And does yeah. it depend yeah. on the age, or what are the factors? And so the fact is you have to check the eye as a total. So usually the minus paper, minus number of people are called myopia. And myopia, one out of 10,000 will have changes on retina. So those patients have to take precaution uh, laser treatment for the retina, which is different. And uh, um, as I said, one out of 10,000, 9,000 and people are all right. And then some people have the cornea, which is uh, thin. So they actually check the thickness of cornea. And the layers of cornea if it is healthy no other disease and then your uh, your numbers are uh, uh, because you are actually removing a part of the con- microns of cornea and if you are having a less than a particular thickness and then you, you cannot do a, a elastic because if you do there's a you can have a number can come back so that is why when the when a doctor evaluates and there is a guideline given uh, what are eligible and not eligible and i think you should follow that and then in, in LASIK also there are several, there are three types of LASIK available. So you have to see that I, that's why you have, one is uh, your uh, evidence-based medicine. Second is your uh, faith with the doctor and the doctor has to examine. And if the doctor says you are not eligible, then only do it. And if you have a doubt, better take a second opinion. And I think as, uh, as I showed in the video, the video also mentioned, no, 100% guarantee cannot be given. And again, you are using uh, computerized uh, 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 feeding the data into the computer, which is ca- calculates the number of microns the cornea has to be reshaped and then done it. And that's why the number has to be stable. 
For example, between the age of 18 to 25 only, the, the ideal result will come. And if there are some uh, 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 people, even at the age of 20, 21, the number can keep increasing. And if the number is not stable, then they should not opt for last. And they also should do the measurement, the contact lens for the years together, they are using contact lens. And they have to be off contact lens for two weeks so that they have the proper measurement of the eye and then remove the, uh, then do the last thing. So if you, all parameters are all right, then it is 99.99% successful and many people have done. And because uh, once upon a time, the, there was a condition called, uh, a procedure called radial keratotomy where they were cutting the cornea to uh, remove the glasses, which uh, I was 100% against it. And then came a different type of LASIK. And now we have a different LASIK, which is more advanced and more safe to the eye. Right, sir. A very interesting question. Uh, some people get uh, moist eyes quite easily on seeing uh, maybe a sad news or an emotional scene or something. They, they get Their eyes get moist very easily. Is it something to do with the eyes or is it the emotional state of that person? It is totally emotional state. Actually, they, even in sleep, sleep is not connected to the eye. And then the only thing is uh, they say that they didn't sleep, the eye becomes red. That is because uh, they have not blinked properly. And uh, everything, uh, they, they, even the tears coming, that's a, there's a, one is normal uh, secretion. Second is some disease can be there which can have uh, either a dry eye or uh, excessive production. Or uh, there's a canal between the eye and the nose. If that is blocked also, you can have excessive watering. And uh, so this emotional uh, like crying and uh, when, or when you're uh, even happy, you get tears. Is it because of the, there are uh, uh, nerve supply from the brain, which produces that emotional effect. So that's why I is the seat of love, I is the seat of anger. And that's why all the poets have uh, used eyes as the uh, thing. And even for uh, your uh, yoga and even for concentration, either you close the eye or you focus on something. And again, all that is the, right. even the vision is not part of the eye. Vision is a, uh, is a function of the brain because the, eye, the images fall on the eye. It is carried on to, from the retina to the optic nerve, optic nerve to the optic tract, and optic tract to the brain. And in the back part of the brain, it's called the visual cortex. That's why somebody has a road traffic accident and has an injury to the back of the skull. And then if the cortex, visual cortex is affected, they, they have cortical blindness. They have no injury in the eye, but uh, because the brain center is uh, affected, they can have a uh, blindness. And that is why there's one more technology which is coming when the eye is not working and then they are trying artificial retina. Similarly, now we can have a, a chip which can be a bionic eye, which we can put a chip on the brain and have an infrared camera connected to the glass to directly bypass the eye and the optic nerve and you can do, but uh, it's uh, still an experiment. It has not uh, come through, but it, you are uh, playing with the brain. So it goes to the neurosurgery. So the vision is a function of the brain. Right, sir. We hope it comes through, sir. Now, uh, yeah. uh, there's a question. What is the impact of diabetes on, on the eyes? Is there an impact? And what is the impact? And is there a cure or is there a prevention for uh, such, such an issue? So, so once you are diagnosed with diabetes, whatever may be the cause, either a stress or whether you have a overeating or your genetics. So for example, father, mother has there a high chance, 50, 50 chance for the son or daughter to get diabetes. So that's why when if the father, mother has, you have to make sure you're fit, trim, eat proper diet. And that's why I recommend healthy, uh, low fat and green colorful vegetables are good for both age related macular degeneration and diabetic retinopathy. And diabetes affects the small blood vessels of the body. It affects the smallest blood vessels are seen in all parts of the eye, body, specifically in, in retina, in the eye, in the brain, in the heart, in the kidneys, and also the nerve supply to the feet. So, eye when it affects the uh, diabetes when it affects the eye, it's called the diabetic retinopathy. As I showed in the picture, even if the retinopathy, the vision can be normal, and without symptoms, you can have retinopathy. But that does not mean the eyes are normal. That is why whatever the eye looks normal may not be looking normal. That's why somebody who is blind because of retina, the outside looks all right. But uh, inside the retina will be uh, having a vision problem. So that's why we have made a public uh, a movie, which I can, I can send the link to you and you can send to all the participants, where uh, 
diabetes is a preventable blindness where if you go to the doctor regularly and even 90% can be treated with the laser, rest of the 10% may need injection and some will need surgery. And one out of 100 may go blind because they are genetically prone in spite of all the treatment. But I think if you take care right from the day of diabetes, so in India the problem is, for example, from the age of 30, nobody is doing a, a postprandial check. That means after eating, taking the blood sugar and also doing the hb one ac if you do every year, for example, every year you take and then uh, at the end of five, uh, at the, after five years you find the sugar is calm. Then you know that uh, four five years you are normal and this year onwards you have diabetes. In India you go for something and you do a blood test, suddenly you see blood sugar 300, 400 and then you diagnose diabetes and you don't know when, how long it was there. And it takes five years for the diabetes to produce eye problem. And then another three, four years for getting the vision problem. So if somebody has a vision problem and then you find he is diabetic, that means nine years he has not taken tablet or uh, insulin. Right, sir. So we almost come to the close of uh, this session and with this I'll uh, just ask you a last question. Uh, before that, sir, I, I would like to inform you that uh, All World Gayatri Parivar and Dia, we have a doctor's team, a very committed and dedicated uh, doctor's team. Uh, and and they they do voluntary works to, uh, also, and they sort of help poor patients by doing the operations uh, without cost, etc. So I just wanted to inform you that we are doing this kind of work also, and and the doctor's team is quite dedicated. And uh, even during the time of um, uh, of, of COVID, uh, they've done a wonderful job, sir. So uh, the last question is, and it's a very common question again: How useful are uh, um contact lenses and, and i mean what are the factors one should keep in mind why why using contact lenses or avoiding them yeah no, so the, whoever needs glasses like what I'm, if you have a myopia or higher hypermetropia that means you need glasses for uh, correcting your vision so there are three options one is wearing regular glasses other is contact lens and third is refractive surgery that is elastic surgery so if somebody is opting for contact lens and I think uh, you have to follow the uh, instructions given. One is you are a personal hygiene of the hand because you are handling it. And when you are touching the contact lens, make sure you have wash your hands. And then specific uh, solution, check whether you are uh, using the correct solution as well as whether there is no infection there, uh, expiry date of that. And then the uh, instructions given for, uh, for example, some contact lens can be used only for eight hours. Some can be used for uh, 12 hours. And specific uh, uh, instruction to people who are using that cosmetic contact lens. For example, they want to go for a party, they wear a colored contact lens or in the movies or in the plays, uh, in the uh, in the serials, they use contact lens to show as a nagin or something like that, or they just want to say like a Europeanized greenish uh, color. And which I think when they use, they have to be careful. For example, they are allowed to use 12 hours, they should use only 12 hours. If they are allowed to use only eight hours, they should use eight hours. And then some people, there's a thing called continuous wear contact lens, which if it is prescribed, you can use it. Or the other thing called disposable contact lens, where you use once and throw it out. So I think it depends on what type of contact lens you buy and, and use it. And whatever instruction the optometrist or the eye doctor gives, you should uh, uh, follow it. And in case you have excessive watering, redness, please discontinue the contact lens and check the eye doctor because it, it can be a small micro dot uh, infection happening. And if you neglect it, and that can produce a problem and one out of 100,000, that means one out of one lakh people may lose the eye. And that is because they can develop corneal ulcer. But as I said, uh, only one out of uh, one lakh. The rest of the people, if you do precaution, almost 99.99% uh, .99 are all right. Uh, thank you, doctor. And and uh, this one one last question, uh, absolutely one last question that, that we are taking. Uh, and uh, the question is, can you throw some light on, on retinous pigmentosa and if cataract surgery is safe in retinous pigmentosa patients? This is this has been asked by one of the viewers, sir. Sure. So there is a patient has retinitis pigmentosa and cataract. That's right. That's what you're asking. Yes, yes. So, so cataract and surgery is nothing to do with retinitis pigmentosa or anything. So that is why in evaluation of a cataract patient, we check the retina. So, I have a standard uh, uh, thing which I type and give them, giving a case summary to a patient. 
whatever vision is blocked by cataract that much vision will improve or may improve with the cataract surgery and whatever vision is blocked by retina or retinitis pigmentosa that much vision may not improve so if the retinitis pigmentosa damages the retina and the 50% of the vision is not uh, gone and the rest of the another 20 30% vision is uh, blocked by cataract that much vision can improve so i always tell this it's like the uh, milk and water together so the cataract is in the middle of the eye and retina is in the back of the eye so the light has to go through cornea uh, front of the eye chamber anterior chamber then lens then vitreous and retina so if the cataract is blocking for example 20% that much vision can improve but uh, you cannot exactly say that a 50 minus 20 30 percent come because eye does not follow mathematics so that is where the patient who are even for a normal patient we have to evaluate whether retina is all right or not particularly if you are diabetic retinopathy and if you have a macular edema the cataract surgery can worsen it and if you have a retinitis pigmentosa it doesn't affect anything but but if the retina is already damaged and whatever uh, treatment cannot be done for that that much machine will not improve for example sometimes cataract may be there but if the retinal pigmentosa is already damaged the center of the eye in spite of being cataract it will not help in improving the vision except you have removed a cataract and put an artificial lens thank you sir thank you so much for uh, answering all those questions and throwing light on some of the finer aspects of the eye so thank you sir for joining us today and i would also like to inform you as i briefed you about uh, the dev sanskriti vishwavidyalaya at uh, at haridwar Yes. So a lot of research yeah. is also being carried on um, the alternative uh, domain of medicine, such as yogyopathy, and where ancient wisdom can come together with modern science and and uh, derive something from the confluence of the two. So now yes. that you yes. you come to the family, sir, in a in a in a manner of speaking, we would like your guidance and uh, um, uh, going ahead. Uh, we would definitely come back to you for your guidance. And as I said, we would like you to visit the university so that something can be choked out together. So definitely, uh, yes. Details. I'll go through it. And Absolutely, sir. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. So, thanks to for inviting me. Uh, so the we are very happy that I'm a part of you. The website, the other things, and the the uh, uh, whatever links I went through, very really nice to see uh, uh, producing peace and harmony, which is what is important. Absolutely, sir. So thank you so much, and thank you to the participants. I would also like to inform all of you that we have uh, another session of Gyan Sabha coming up on the next Sunday. Uh, and that will be uh, on on um, on the topic of while india is on road to become a developed nation there are certain challenges and hurdles which are there uh, before us so how to tackle those challenges and how will india shape up in the 21st century is the topic for the next gyan sabha session and the speaker would be dr chinmay pandya pro vice chancellor of dev sanskriti vishwavidyalaya who is also on the official panel of the government of india the international yoga day celebration and he is on a number of other committees nationally and internationally so he'll be speaking about how to take india ahead in the 21st century also we have started a, a movement uh, under the guidance of shade dr india yeah, in, in april of global prayers from 620 to 630 so wherever you are from 620 to 630 Sit at a place, chant Gayatri Mantra or whichever prayer you want to chant for the well-being of all, and so that this pandemic which has come upon us goes away quickly. Pa- prayers have tremendous power, and collective prayers even more so. So I would request you to join us from 6:20 to 6:30 wherever you are to tune in and pray for the well-being of all. Thank you, Doctor Natarajan. Thank you to all the participants for joining us. Yes, yes, so yes, so there is a prayer specifically for uh, eyes called Shakshu Shobha Nisha, and also Aditya Hridayam, which uh, one of so I also chant, and I have the book with me, so I think that's good for vision. That's what uh, I learned from the uh, the prayers. Shakshu Shobha. Absolutely, sir. Please go ahead, and we'll join us. Join you, sir. Right. No, no. What I'm saying, you can download it from the YouTube or uh, the internet, and you can do it yourself. I'm saying. What I'm saying, it's a long. All right, all right. The one which uh, Lord Rama prayed to kill uh, Ravan, 
and that's what was done in Rameshwar, where it's like algorithm is actually if you chant, it says it can create any, you can remove any obstacle, plus they're uh, helpful for both eyes. And then they say the right eye is ruled by sun god and left eye by uh, the moon. So that's how you chant. And then Shakshushopanishad is specifically for the eyes. Right, right. So uh, with this, we have come to a uh, to the conclusion of this session. And as I had mentioned, I uh, mentioned it again. Miss Amrita Mohanty, uh, who is a law student from the Utkal University, has penned a beautiful poem. And India and Maharashtra Bamboo Promotion Foundation would like to felicitate uh, Miss Mohanty. With this, we come to a close. And I request all of you to join me in uh, in a small prayer, Shanti Part, for the well-being of all. Om Dhyo Shanti Rantariksha Gum Shanti Prithivi Shanti Rapaha Shanti Roshudaya Shanti Vanaspataya Shanti Vishwedeva Shanti Brahma Shanti Sarvagum Shanti Shanti Reva Shanti Shama Shanti Redi Om Shanti 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 Sarvarishka Shanti Bhavatu Thank you for joining us everyone.